Duality produces danger, whose fear creates belief. Hence the fearless one is empty, and to them there comes the truth. Chapter 2, entitled Skeptoria Duality is the condition of things being apart, set off from each other, and it is this condition which breeds the sense of insecurity and loneliness, danger, and fear. Men caught up in this sense, or others caught up in this sense of duality, have always sought some way of reuniting themselves with the universe and some path that will lead them to God. Finding it not in themselves, they have looked to all sorts of prophets and saints to give it to them through some act of grace, and have thus become willing followers and acolytes. Yet there is a paradox. You cannot follow a seer except by seeing for yourself. You cannot follow a prophet except by following no one. You cannot follow in the footsteps of a creative person except by doing the very thing that he could not never do. And therefore, in the worship of the prophet, there is the destruction of his method, message. The prophet as an intermediary between the people and God it only increases their sense of separation and need, and therefore their fear. He thus becomes a contradiction of himself. Rather than bringing forth new insights, he obscures the truth by creating beliefs that disable the believer in dealing with the truth directly. What one believes is not important, but what is important is their sense of curiosity and power in looking at things. For if one does not have these everything about him, was quickly go stale, and even the most profound inspirations will become nothing but dead idols. To listen to the voice of God is really to hear nothing at all, for that voice is the sound of all living things, and there is no separate utterance, whether sacred or profane. There does not need to be an official word when all the universe speaks a single truth, and there does not need to be a concept of the holy when there is nothing that is not. Only the most profound skepticism will bring us to the true faith, for faith is not the acceptance of revelation, and belief, but rather the acceptance of things the way they actually are, and the willingness to confront them with curiosity and joy. And it is a moving thing that makes us far beyond the foolishness of every belief. Belief is that which clings to something no longer in movement, to the word of the past or fixed ideas. When things are still in movement, they cannot be belief, but only the constant watching, this watching, this awareness, this continuing perception is the very pulse of existence, and without it, the mind becomes dead. A dead mind can never find the living truth, and that is why the mind that is caught up in some tradition of belief will never be able to understand either itself or the meaning of its own religion. I'm not saying that traditions have no meaning or importance. To the contrary, I know they have a great and compelling beauty, but it seems to me that what is profoundly beautiful when interpreted poetically is often profoundly destructive when accepted dogmatically. As an example of this, I think the pilgrimage to Mecca is a symbolic of a religious tradition anywhere on earth. 
It is a goal of every believer to make a pilgrimage to Mecca at least once in his life. He goes there to kiss the black stone, a meteorite which has been worshipped for thousands of years as a sacred relic that came down from the heavens, also known as the Circle of the Kaaba, or the cube-shaped temple. Seven times. Poetically, I think this was a great meaning. The circling of the cube, Kaaba, represents the act of seeing reality from all angles and thus transcending it. It is an escape from the maze of ignorance and an approach into the circle of truth and wisdom. The kissing of the black stone symbolizes a deep love for the earth and for the stars that have given us our being, a deep reverence for the mysterious root of our existence. The believer going through all these rites, forgets for a moment his own inner loneliness and at one with the crowd. There is, of course, great beauty in this for him and great comfort. Yet few indeed are pilgrims who reflect upon this and discover for themselves why they feel empty and yearn for rites, ceremonies, scriptures, and prophets. You feel empty only when you are full of belief, only when you anticipate something that is not fulfilled. To actually be empty is to experience wonder and fulfillment. The openness to all living things, to the man who actually is empty, the truth is always coming just as it does not come to the man who presumes he knows what it is. It is very necessary to be empty in order to actually circle the cube, to actually see the objective reality. Without an emptiness of belief, the circling of the Kaaba is merely the worship of a square, the unreasoning acceptance of convention and mediocrity. To pay homage to the prophet means no, no thing until you have experienced the meaning of his life in your own actions. But once you have done that, you have attained the same power that he himself possessed, and there is no longer any need to pay homage unto anyone. To literally get down on your knees and kiss the black stone is really rather silly isn't it? Yet there isn't really what most organized religion is all about, kissing some meaningless object, some relic of the past that does not in any way bestow love, compassion, or understanding. Nature is ir irreverent to all of our beliefs, and life is last destroyed them. Only the truth remains, devoid of our myths, our gods, and our illusions. The living God is not to be found in the worship of the dead. And the more we follow the prophets of the past, the more alienated we become from our own reality. The more we seek authorities, the more confused we grow demanding great explanations. We finally come to the point of not being able to understand anything. The greater is our pilgrimage, the more we lose our way. There is no path to salvation except in our ordinary lives. And we finally understand only after all pilgrimages have come to an end. Understanding its self salvation.